What's up, it's BT here, and this is my new small form factor PC build. These things have been all the rage lately, especially with the homie Ali from Optimum Tech making cinematic masterpieces of his SFF builds. At first, I was a little bit hesitant. You guys know me, I love me some RGB, but as of late, it's been quite the opposite, as I've had so many programs running in the background of my old PC that it was conflicting with each other and it was causing performance issues. So that brings me to the first reason why I wanted to do this build in the first place was to get rid of RGB and all the programs. Well, as much as I could because as you guys know everything has RGB these days. The second reason why I want to build in a small form factor case was for the challenge. There's something about putting the fastest parts possible into the smallest amount of space possible that provides a unique challenge. And if you're looking to get into small form factor cases the number one thing that I've realized during this whole process is that you need to plan out your build. Know the sizes of everything that you're going to be getting and make sure your case can hold it. And last but not least the final reason why I want to build this was to go Team Red. That's right. This is an AMD build because I needed something with a lot of cores for my video editing and also the game that I'm playing right now, Valorant, is super CPU dependent. So I need this to do all of it and stream on top of that. Also, I'll be explaining how I found a lot of these parts and hopefully point you guys in the right direction so that you can also build your dream build as well. And of course, I'll have everything linked down below to all the parts I use in this video. So if you have been looking for an AMD CPU or an NVIDIA GPU and they've you know scalpers have just taken everything you've come to the right place so let's go over the parts of this build this is going to be predominantly used for streaming gaming and video editing and some light after effects use so the parts that i went with were the ryzen 5900x the rtx 3090 from pmy 32 gigabytes of xlr8 ram from pmy a one terabyte a two terabyte ssd nvme a four terabyte ssd for some storage the corsair sfx 750 50 for my power supply, the Aorus X570i Pro Wi-Fi, the NZXT X53 240mm AIO, and I'm putting all of this into the Cooler Master NR200. I've gotten a lot of questions about what case I got. Alright, so I originally wanted the 5950X, but those things are like a unicorn. I can never find one on a drop, and when they did drop, there was very few of them, but after doing some research, I saw that in programs that I use, like DaVinci Resolve and Premiere for video editing, that the benefits of those 16 core cores to the 12 cores of the 5900X was very minimal. So I saved myself a couple of bucks and this brings me to my first tip for finding parts. Check your local stores because I checked mine. I didn't even know there was one. There was one right down the street. Uh, I got tired of trying on Newegg and Best Buy. Lo and behold, I checked on like a Monday or Tuesday and they had an OEM version of it. They didn't even have a box for it and I grabbed the last one. So guys, please check your local stores. I didn't even know I had one, like I said. So uh, I'm sure you probably have some around you that you don't even realize are there. Now I realize my video card is totally not necessary and it's overkill, but what I realize is that it's very hard to find 3080s, which are the more reasonably priced video card. Now the second tip that I have for you guys is to use this YouTube page that I'm gonna link down below. What happens is they run a script and it will alert you in the background. Just keep this running and when something drops immediately, it'll start blaring an alarm and it'll drop a link to where you can pick up a video card. And they do this for the 3090, for the 3080, and for the 3070. And they have this for every single site, manufacturing sites, to Best Buy, to Newegg. You'll be the first to know instead of trying to guess where it's gonna drop on a certain day. And I was able to grab one of these and a lot were dropping that night it was at like midnight but what I noticed is not many 3080s were dropping there were some 3070s which I feel like is more than enough for most people but you know we always want the best so I did have to end up paying like two thousand dollars for this 3090 I was desperate to make this build so I just spent the extra money and of course I had to use some SSDs because the bit rate files of my videos are super high so I need something that can handle my 422 10-bit files from my Canon C7 70. Now the Corsair SFX 750 was also hard to obtain. I got lucky in my local store. These things were actually getting scalped as well. Damn, this is why we can't have nice things, scalpers. You're killing us, man. Y'all killing us. Y'all killing me with this I can't help. But you never want to skimp on a power supply. I know it's easy to because it's at the bottom of that PC part picker list. You want to, you know, save that extra $20, but guys, don't. 
do it. The last thing you want is for random restarts or worse, your computer not even starting and then you gotta wait for that power supply, a good one to actually come in. And I've also had a lot of questions about this case. This is the Cooler Master NR200. This was recommended to me by Dimitri from Hardware Connect, so shout out to him for his help. What I loved about building in this case is that it has a screwless design, so everything just snaps in all the sides. So it allowed me to work from every angle of the case and funnel all the different cables. This was huge for a small form factor case. From what I've seen, it's not the smallest, but it's not the biggest. So it'll give you a good amount of freedom to fit some of the bigger cars, like a 3090 or an AIO at a reasonable price of only $80. I've seen some of the higher end ones at like 200, 250, 300. It does come in a white and black, but tell me the black isn't sexy as hell. But this case, by all means, is just still super small when comparing it to my older Lee and Lee 011 dynamic case. It just dwarfs <laughs> this NR200. This case will provide you enough challenge, but not challenging to the point where you're gonna be ripping out your hair. All you really need to do guys is look at the measurements, which they give you on the Cooler Master site. Uh, see what it will allow for your video card, for your AIO and stuff like that. And then you just build. And like I said, make sure you have a picture or make sure you have a plan before you lay your motherboard, your CPU and everything into the case. I gotta say the airflow in this case has been insane. It's a double-edged sword though, because it does get pretty loud because it's so open with these circular holes on the sides. And it also collects a lot of dust as well because even after a month of having it, this looks like I've had it for years. So that's one con of this case, but I don't mind cleaning it. Like I said, it's very easy to take apart. Now the motherboard I went with was the Aorus X570i Pro Wi-Fi. Motherboards are boring AF, but you do need a good one to have a solid performance. It has enough USB 3.0 ports. It has a 3.1 port and a type C as well. It also has a really good audio amp on it. I also did have to buy a fan splitter for this. I think I bought two of them because I have six fans running and there's only two ports for fans on this entire motherboard since it's a smaller one. Overall, my building experience was very positive. Once I got the video card through the front of the case, it was like Tom Brady, you know, dropping back to throw a dime to Gronk through two defenders. I felt like I won the Super Bowl. It's weird to say this, but it's oddly satisfying getting a 3090 into a size, a case of this size, uh, because I was worried about it for weeks. So I felt a, a huge sigh of relief once that happened. I did run into some issues with the slim Noctua fans that I put on the bottom of the case to pull air in through the bottom and up through the GPU and up through the case. Because the GPU is so humongous, it sagged a little bit. So the blades of the 3090 fan were actually hitting the slim Noctua fan and they would rub against each other. So I had to just reseat the video card a little bit and that just solved the problem. It's a tight fit, but that's why we are building in this case, right? I left the Cooler Master fans that came with the case on top. These do a great job of pulling a ton of air from the case out as exhaust through the top. And then on the side, I have the AIO on the bracket. And this also has some fans pulling in air as intake. I do wonder if the air cooler would have been a better choice sound wise, but I think the AIO has been better overall for thermals. There's a ton of cables that come out of the AIO as well, which I couldn't really hide because of the angle that it's at. But since this is a closed case, I wasn't too worried about cable management this time around. Who knows, maybe I'll do liquid cooling one day in the system. Would you guys wanna see something like that? Because they actually do have a position for a pump on this case. So that would actually be pretty sick to mess around with and maybe put a window back on there. I have six fans in total within the system. Those Slim Noctua fans on the bottom, like I said, pulling air in, two on the side and then those Cooler Master fans on top. The thermals have been solid under intensive processes like video editing and gaming. The system idles at around 39 Celsius and the CPU around 40 Celsius. During gaming, the system temps would go up to about 50 to 55 C and then the CPU would go up to around 63 to 70 Celsius at the high end. Really happy with those numbers considering the small space that we build in as the optimum range of a good gaming system usually falls between 65 and 70 C. Here's my 3D mark scores. It says my PC is better than 99% of computers out there. Not too shabby. Everything is running stock at the moment. I haven't played around with undervolting yet, but let me know if that's something you guys would like to see as well. The main game that I'm playing, you guys already know, Valorant, CPU dependent. I found this out though when I was using my old PC that I couldn't hit 360 hertz, in which I realized my 9900K was limiting factor when running Valorant because I was only getting around 200 to 240 frames when combined with a 3090. But now with my Ryzen 5900X and the 3090, I'm averaging 340 to 420 frames per second on a 1440p monitor. And sometimes I'm even hitting 600 frames per second in some areas. 
That's damn near a 43% increase over my old system. Even in graphically intensive areas with a ton of action, it's able to hold its own with ease. Everything just feels smoother than a new polished bowling ball. My aim was on point since there are no slowdowns on moving around the map and moving my crosshair to snap onto enemies was super smooth. I'm never gonna downplay just how much of a factor your system actually plays in FPS games. It almost feels unfair. AMD really is onto something with this 5000 series. On Apex, it maxes out at about 240 on my 1440p and 300 frames on my 1080p 360Hz monitor, but that's because they have a limit on the FPS in that game. Needless to say, I'm now Team Red. I've tested it out on stream and my fps stayed within the high 200s to 300s with no slowdowns or stuttering it felt like if i was just playing off stream and that was never the case before when i had my old intel and i was just running a single streaming setup i've had no blue screens of deaths or errors no random restarts it's been rock solid which was my fear with going with the amd build so now that that fear is gone nothing can stop me so if you're thinking about making that jump like nike says just do it. For video editing, this thing has saved me a ton of time. The 5900X really shines over my 9900K. Video playback is heavily CPU dependent on Premiere Pro and before I could barely play back my footage at 1 8th of resolution and even then I would still drop frames. Now I can play back my 10-bit 422 footage at full resolution without any drop frames. I honestly haven't been this happy in a long time guys. I could cry. <laughs> Who's cutting onions? <laughs> My export times have decreased substantially, saving me a ton of time on the back end of my post-production. It used to take my old PC 30 minutes to export. Over time, that's gonna build up to saving me days of time just creating, and that just allows me to do and work on other projects. Or just kick it with friends. DaVinci Resolve playback was good before, but now everything just feels a little bit smoother and snappier. It's shaved off a little bit of time on my exports, but not by much because this is more GPU dependent. But honestly, I feel like I've harnessed the power of the universe within this small form factor case. To date, this is my favorite PC build. It's small, it's sexy, it's sleek, it's powerful. It'll do everything you need it to do and then some. It saves me a ton of space on my desk. If you're looking to go into small form factor building, it provides enough of a challenge to build in this Cooler Master in R200 without it becoming a nightmare. The temps are amazing. It, it does get a little bit loud, like I said, which is a con since it is so open. Sound doesn't get lost like it would on a bigger case. So that's one negative of this build. It's not a huge annoyance, but I do notice it from time to time. So if you've been on the fence or you're looking to dabble in SFF cases, definitely check out the Cooler Master NR200 and I'll drop some links to how to catch these graphic cards and CPUs on sale down below in the comments. So hopefully this helps you because I know it's not fun looking for these parts. And if you're team blue, now's a great time to switch over to team red. I'm a believer of the hype now of AMD. Now that this build is complete, I can confidently say if a product sucks, it's because of the product, not because my PC is holding it back. That is until we get 720 hertz monitors coming out. Wait, wait, what's that? Asus just released a 720 hertz monitor? Bruh.